What's up, folks? Welcome to 7th Heaven Homestead. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, like, all that stuff. I always forget to say that. Real quick video. I want to change people's frame of mind uh, with this video. The um, fact is that time is getting short. And you've got to decide what you believe about where we are on the uh, revelation timeline. Um, things are looking really bad. Now, do you believe that you know Trump will get back in office and and you know things are going to get better and we're going to turn this ship around? Then you know you uh, you should act that way. You're spending and your preparation and how you manage your home should reflect that if you're if you think like i do and you think that time is coming when it's going to be really really hard to feed your family and uh not because you don't have the money but because there's nothing to buy in the store then your actions from this point forward need to reflect that. And I talk to a lot of people who they say, you know, there's no way, right? Like, uh, I, I can't get out of where I'm at. I've got a mortgage. I've got uh, car payments. Uh, I don't make enough to put money aside. Uh, to, to move or buy a homestead or or to even stack, you know, stack up food uh, in my house. And this is where that frame of mind really comes into play. If you really think that the end is near, then what the hell are you worried about your credit score for, for example? You realize that you could walk away from your mortgage. You really could. You could short sell the house. You could foreclose. You could take your car and give it back to the dealer. Drive it right up on the lot. Say, I'm not paying for this anymore. I'm not going to make you guys go through the headache of repossessing it. Here it is. You could. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. I didn't even think about that. But because God is merciful, he allowed me and my family to go through an absolute economic catastrophe in our home. And I lost everything. Going from, you know, six-figure salary, uh, multiple trips to Disney World a year, to abject poverty, to begging for a job, which my boss was gracious enough to give me, and, um, and having nothing. And so for a few years, I struggled to make payments and stay up on top of my debts and all that stuff when my work dried up and, and I found myself doing day labor for a hundred bucks a day. Hey, I'll tell you that story someday. It's pretty embarrassing. And I got to the place in my life where I had to declare bankruptcy. I, I had no way out. But I, I think, you know, what could I have done if I would have just accepted years before that I was uh, in, a, in a debt trap and I would have just accepted that I was headed towards bankruptcy. And think about your life. What does it mean for you if you just accept that you're in too much debt and that what's important is securing your family's food supply and shelter. When I declared bankruptcy, and I'll tell you the story about 
you know, building $1,500 to pay the lawyer to, to file the paperwork. But anyway, when I finally declare, declared bankruptcy, I thought my economic future was over. I had already uh, reduced my debts to zero by that time. I My cars had been repossessed, so I went out and I bought myself a, a $1,000 hoopty, which my son is driving now, by the way. I... I started to live really, really small. I declared bankruptcy and they cleared out all the uh, the debts I had and uh, all the credit cards and and I started from zero, uh, renting a house and working my balls off and building a savings account. And six months after I declared for bankruptcy, the credit card offers started <laughs> rolling in. And, uh, and I got one and I charged, you know, 50 bucks on it and paid it off. And we're still doing that. And two years to the day after my bankruptcy was discharged, I got a pre-approval letter from a bank to go and purchase a homestead. Those 24 months flew by. And in those 24 months, I put together what for me is a lot of money. But I, I live far from everything in a rental house. Uh, I, if I tried to live near my job, I, you know, I'd be paying double or more. And, and, you know, it's not all my genius. It's not my genius at all. I, 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 I'll tell you stories about the divine, you know, literal miracles that came through along the way. But seven minutes in on this video, I want to get to my point. You could, if you make what the average person makes in America today is 25 grand a year, and you're paying $1,500 in rent every month, you could walk away from that. You got a husband and a wife, both working, you got kids, you could rent a 1-1, one, one. and all five of you could live uh, for you know, I don't know, 600 uh, bucks a month and you know pull out beds. You could do that. You really could. You could dump the $400 a month car payment and the full cover insurance and, you know, borrow a thousand dollars and buy yourself a beater with no AC. You could do that and drive that around for a year. You really could. And if you're super saddled in debt, you maybe should look into bankruptcy and take all of that cash that you're not spending now and sock it away. And if you can live on half your income, well then that's $12,000 saved away at the end of year one. Yeah, you have to eat a lot of rice and beans. It's just a year. And you may not have a year left. This country may not have a year left, I don't know. You gotta do something. You gotta make a, take a step today and I know it's tough. Can't imagine, you know, what it's going to be like if you're the one in your family that <laughs> needs to talk everybody into giving up the Netflix account, the Disney Plus account, needs to give up your, you know, weekly outings. You talk your wife into dumping the idea of the weekly date nights or turning them into you know, a couple of sodas on the patio. Well, it's going to be some tough conversation. But I'm here to encourage you, okay? After about five years of eating crap, five years of driving a $1,000 beater, five years of, of really living small and cannot fail to mention five years of being richly blessed 
with my work. I've been able to buy that that little plot right there, that little that little square. And that little square is three acres of land with a with a house. It's not a mansion. It's not anything, you know, outrageous. It's also surrounded by timberland all around here, privately owned. Letters have already gone out to those people, asking them to lease me a piece of that land so I can run hogs through there, so I can run sheep through there. I don't know what all this will look like, you know, a year from now, two years from now. I pray that everything's okay. But if it's not, God help me, the only thing I want is to be able to secure a meal every day for my wife and my five kids. And I can't do that living in suburbia like I'm living now. I can't do that depending on the local Walmart and Publix to have to have the meat and if they have it for me to be able to afford it. Take a long hard look at your finances. Take a long hard look at your debts. Make a decision now in the next three days. You're going to keep doing what you're doing. And also think that all of this is, 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 a, is a train sort of, sort of about to derail. How does that make sense? It doesn't. So you're going to have to do some, some things that conventional wisdom would tell you is crazy. You're going to have to do them soon. Reach out in the comments. Let me know what you think. If I can help you, I will. And, uh, and do something. Do something now. Do something today. Anything. Take a step today. Don't let the sun go down. Don't let your head on that pillow and realize, oh, I didn't do anything. To secure myself and my family. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. So do something today. Catch you on the next one.